in the end of my last video, I show you that I was able to cut this piece out using the 2D contour and that was really a good news for me uh, because the piece will look a lot better and it saved me a lot of time milling the outline of the piece so I will cut all the other brackets using the same parameters and also the same type of tool pass but I have to tell you one thing before continuing because I use this hose to blast compressed air to the bit the air pressure will 30 psi so it blow the chip light everywhere a lot of aluminum chip light stick on the rail and some tiny chip light stick on the ball screw those chips even fly up here, stick on the rail and the ball screw on the x-axis for the rails it might be okay because the bearing blocks have a bush bearing so the rubber seal on the bearing block can clear up the chip before the ball bearings roll on it so it still be clean but for the ball screw I'm not sure so now I want to make a type of fence around here so the chip only fly to the back or the front of the machine and I can vacuum them up later so let me just try to make something like that I'm just going to take this piece of cardboard and try to wrap around the spindle like this and I'm going to tape it here and I want this front part of the fence to be straight so I'm just going to cut the two corners here a bit down so we can tape the top because this piece of cardboard is kind of hard I cannot really put this edge to the tip of the bit because when the bit plunges into the material the cardboard might crash into the stock and push the z-axis back or maybe it's just going to get destroyed so I will try to make this edge a bit higher compared to the ER20 chuck and now to fill up the gap between this edge and the stock I will use some foam tape I'm just going to align the tape here So now this part is soft and I'm just going to put a paper here so it doesn't get sticky and I will cut a lot of line here to make it like a brush so it can place around when crashing to the stock So now when I wrap it, I'm going to wrap it around like this so this edge will be around the tip of the bit but now if I do like this, the air in here just swirl around and blow the chip this way I want it also to be able to like blow to the back uh, so it will have more air flow I think that I will have to open a gate at the back of this piece I'm just going to cut in the middle here all the way up and cut it sideways a little bit I'm just going to fold it outward like this and I'm going to tape a piece of cardboard up here to hold it together now at the back it will look like this and I hope that the chip will fly through here so let me just tape this piece on the spindle and try to mill another bracket hopefully it will work Now this piece is fixed on here, let me just try to crash it into the stock. Let's see how this part flex. As you can see, when this piece crashed into the stock, this brush part bends exactly as I expected. So now let me just reset up the stock and start milling again.
this fencing setup worked almost exactly as I expected only that it started to fall apart and the tape started to get loose and also at the back so I think that I would have to use some stable to fix everything together other than that I think that the principle worked well the chip is focused here at the front and also at the back that I have a cardboard to catch it around the machine there's a lot less there's a little bit on the rail but nothing on the ball screw so that's a good news so let me staple everything together and continue milling this piece The tool changing is a bit more difficult with this setup because I have less access around here but it's still not that hard to do. Not much to say here, I have the second piece mills as good as the first one so I will continue to mill the other two brackets for the corners of the frame. Afterward I will show you a lot more details about this process, all my parameters and how I set things up when I mill the two big pieces for the x-axis.
as you can see, all four corner brackets were milled correctly. The two bits that I used to cut those pieces are still in very good shape. They are still very sharp. I cannot see any type of damage on them. So I think that all the parameters that I used were very safe. So I will use the same parameters to cut the other two pieces. Uh, let me just show you the stock that I got for those two big pieces. Just take a good look at this beautiful piece of aluminum that I got from eBay for $70. It's half inch thick, 10 inch wide, and 24 inch long. The way that I usually mill the pieces, for example this bracket, I would have the stock a bit bigger compared to the piece. And then I just cut the piece out from the stock. But for the two big plates on the x-axis, their width is 250 mm. And this stock is 10 inch width, so 254 mm. Just a bit wider compared to the piece that I need to cut. And the length of the piece is 360 mm, so about 14 inch. And this piece is only 24 inch. So if I mill those two pieces as I usually do, I wouldn't have to prepare two pieces of stock, 10 inch width and 14 inch length. So if I cut this piece in two pieces, one piece would be 14 inch length and the other one only 10 inch length. So that wouldn't be enough for the second piece. I showed you in my last video the way I would cut those two pieces. I would arrange them the way that they have a portrait overlap in the middle here. That way I don't need to pre-cut this piece of aluminum using my saw. And also I will save some length on the stock and fit the two pieces in one stock. And one more thing that the dimensions of the pieces that need to be cut. I almost filled up the working area of this machine. The working area of this machine in X and Y axis is 280mm by 380mm. And the dimension of the piece is 250mm by 360mm. So I won't have any place to clamp the stock down. What I will do is that I will drill some hole and use some screw like this to fix the piece down to the waste bore. And of course I wouldn't have to drill the hole just is outside of the piece and also at the area just the bit not going to run into. So let me just show you the layout of the pieces on the computer and also the position of the holes. Here's roughly how I going to lay out the two pieces of the gantry plate for the x-axis on the piece of stock. The minimum width of the stock is about 250mm and the minimum length is around 600mm. The reason that I need some space between the two pieces is that when I cut one piece, the bit can run in between the space here without cutting into the other piece. I will show you how I set up the milling later in Fusion 360. And here are the position of the holes where I will drill through and use some screw to fix the stock to the waste board so it doesn't move. I also make sure that I have enough space between the holes and the edge of the pieces so I don't cut into the screw when I mill the pieces out using the 2D contour here along the outline. I will share this drawing in the description of the video. Now let me just show you how I drill all the holes on the stock and how I going to fix it to the waste board. I have the layout of the stock print out here. So I will base on the dimension on the layout to mark the place where I need to drill the holes. At this corner, the distance of the hole to the edge will be 30mm and 30mm. As I told you before, this hole is mock. Now I need one hole around here. The distance will be 270mm. Another one symmetrical on this side. And one hole around the edge here, 207mm. And that is, I have the mark of all the holes. I will do a quick pilot drill here, and then I will take it to the drill press to drill it all the way through. If I have a puncher, it will be a lot easier. I just put it here and punch the mark, but I don't have it, so I just going to have to use the drill. I will use this type of screw to fix the stock on the waste board. 
and the diameter of this screw is about 5.5, 5.6 millimeter. So I will make the hole bigger than this screw, about 6 millimeter. All the holes are drilled. Now I will fix this piece of stock on the wasteboard. First step before fixing this piece of stock on the wasteboard, you have to align it along the X and Y axis. Make sure that this edge is about parallel to the movement of the Y axis and this edge to the X axis. And also leave some extra space at the corner here on both X and Y axis so the tool can cut outside of the piece. Once you align the X and Y axis, you only need to drill some small holes at the position of the holes that you already drilled on the stock. I will use a drill bit that is smaller than the screw, so 3.5 mm for me. Now this piece of stock is ready to be milled, so let me just show you my parameters on Fusion 360. Here in Fusion 360, I will show you very quickly how I set up the milling for one plate, and you can do the same for the second one. First of all, I just go to open from my computer, get to the design. If you are milling those pieces using exactly the same layout that I use, make sure that you have the piece layout this way. This is the Y axis, this is the X axis, and this side will be around at this upper corner of the X and Y axis where we have the hole roughly around here on the stock. Now just go to Manufacture, Define a Stock. Usually I will choose the origin around here, but this time I will choose up here, upper right corner and I put zero offset on the side and zero on top and click OK. First of all, I want to mute this pocket and this one so I'm just going to use adaptive clearing tool path. And I will use a 6mm flat end mill. I disable this. Because my spindle maximum speed is 24,000 RPM, I will use 20,000 RPM. And here for the cutting fit rate, because the bit is big and also my machine is still flimsy, 
So I will go a bit slow. I will put 600 millimeter per minute. And plunge rate, I will reduce this to 200 millimeter per minute. Machining boundary, I will use selection and click the, is this one. Tune containment will be inside the boundary. It's not a rest machining because it's the first time you mute this piece. And here, retraction high, I will reduce it so it go a bit faster. And bottom high, we have to go through the bottom, so I will put minus 0.2 tolerance. For these two pockets, it don't really need to be precise, so I just keep 0.1 millimeter. And here for optimum load, I will put 1.6 millimeter because the machine still flimsy, so this will reduce the load on the bit and make it less chattering. Maximum roughing step down, I put 3 mm. Start to leave, nothing. Smoothing, yes. This will make the machine cut a bit faster, but also reduce the precision. I just going to keep at 0.01 mm. Minimum retraction. And here, RAM clearance, I will reduce this to 1 mm so it go faster. Here I will reduce it a little bit. I want to put 3 mm and click OK. Everything seems to be correct. It mute all the way down through this pocket and these two pockets still not mute because the size of these two pockets is exactly the size of the 6 mm bit. So now I will mute these two pockets using another adaptive clearing tool path. But this time I will use the smaller bit, one eighth of an inch diameter. And I also use 20,000 RPM. Cutting feed rate, this one is a bit smaller so I can go a bit faster. I'm going to use 900 millimeter per minute. The plunge rate, I'm going to keep at 300 millimeter. Selection, so I'm going to choose these two boundary. And here it actually rest machining so I don't need to mute the top and I just click on this menu and choose from previous operation. And reduce this. This I will make it a bit more precise. Also, everything seems to be correct. Now I will mute all the route holes here. From my experience, I will use pocket clearing tool path. For the circular holes, the pocket clearing tool path works almost the same as the adaptive clearing tool path, but the bit doesn't retract all the way up uh, and move to the other hole. After each step down, so, uh, the pocket clearing tool path will mute the holes all the way down to the bottom and then move on to the other hose. That way I will reduce the retraction of the bit and make the milling a bit faster. I will use the same small bit for the hose, so I'm just going to keep all the parameters here the same.
Now for the machining boundary, I just going to click selection. I choose this boundary and also this boundary. So when I do this, it will only mill all the holes here uh, in between the two boundary. Two will be inside the boundary. And here I will reduce all of this. Minus 0.2 to mill all the way through the bottom. I'm going to choose shortest path so it mill a bit faster. And I will reduce this to 0.75. And here, minimum ramp diameter. This is very important because there's a few small holes like this. 4.8 millimeter diameter. I have to make sure that the ramp diameter is small enough so the bit still swirl around when going down. So I will put 0.3 millimeter and click OK. Now as you can see that the two paths only cut the holes in between the two boundaries. Next step I will cut the outline using the 2D contour and because this piece doesn't have small corner so I just only use one bit 6mm flat end mill. I will still use 20,000 RPM. For cutting feed rate, because the 2D contour have a lot of loading on the bits, I will go very slow, 315 mm per minute. And for the plunge rate, I will go 100 mm. Contour selection, this one. Tab. I will need a few to hold the piece in place. I will put one millimeter. I don't think that I need many tabs, so I will increase this distance 60. I think this will be enough. I would have to use multiple depth because my machine is still not that good to cut all the way through in one path. And I will use 1.5 millimeter. That's what I used for all the other pieces before. This part I don't need to change anything, so I just click OK. And because I set up the job with different tools, I will have to save the G code in different files for each tool. So the first tool part here is for the 6mm flat end mill. Create a new folder for it. When X grand tree plate 1. So I will put T1. 6 mm flat and these two two paths will use the same tool so I will export them together by highlighting both of them and export T2 3.175 mm, 1 8 of an inch. And the last one will be the 6 mm flat end mill again. And that's it. Hopefully, it will cut correctly on the machine. The first step is to zero on X and Y axis. 
I just going to use this pointy bit so I can see the position of the bit more clearly. First step, I position the tip of the bit to the corner of the stop and set X0 and Y0. And then later on, to make sure that I will cut into the stock, I will move the bit back inside the stock a little bit, about half millimeter or one millimeter inside from the edge. I set about one millimeter inside from each edge. And that's it for the X and Y zeros. Now I will change to the six millimeter flat and mill and start milling. So far so good, it only took 21 minutes to mill this pocket. One head of an inch bit per second two path. The second two pads took 40 minutes to drill all the holes, so not too bad. Back to the 6mm flat end mill. As you can see that I stopped the machine in the middle of the cut. The reason is that one of the stepper motor on the y-axis is dead. So the axis start to turn. 
and the cut go out of the line here. Luckily I was here to stop it in time so it didn't damage the piece. Now I would have to replace that step tomorrow and also I would have to try to recover the X and Y axis position and then I can continue the 2D control cut on this piece. I just test again and actually the stepper motor is still alive. The problem was coming from the overheating of the stepper motor driver and that disabled that stepper motor. But now I still have one problem is that I lost the position of X and Y axis so I wouldn't have to reset up this 2D contour using a new reference for X and Y axis. Let me just show you how I can do set thing up in Fusion 360 and how I can do find the center of one of the holes here as reference. In Fusion 360 you just reopen the piece, go to manufacture and create the setup and here instead of choosing one of the corner like I always do before I will go to origin and change from stock box point to selected point and on my plate all the holes were mute already so I can choose any holes I will choose this one so I zoom in and click the top edge of the hole and you can see that the origin is moved to the center and top of this hole so now I only need to find the center of the hose and probe the top surface of the plate. After that everything will be the same as I did before so I just going to skip it. To find the center of the hose that I chose on Fusion 360 I will have to use something round and smaller than the diameter of the hole. So I will use the shank of a 2mm drill bit. So let me just tighten this on the spindle and use the hole center firing script to find the center of that hole. Uh, I don't want to go into the details of this script because it's not me who wrote it. I just copy and learn how to use it from a YouTube video. I will give you the link of this video in the description of this video. Now I will have to make sure that the tip of this probe is inside the hole and lower than this surface. And the way to connect the alligator clip will be the same as you do the Z-axis 2 Pro. And then I just run the script. And that's it. The probe should be repositioned at the center of the hole right now. Now I will need to lift it up, change the tool back to 6mm flat end mill, use the Z-axis tool probe and run the 2D contour again. That's really awesome. I was able to recover the X and Y axis position and the new 2D contour 2 path follow exactly the cut that was made by the previous G code file. So this piece will cut out perfectly despite the overheating of the step and motor driver in the mirror. Now just clean up the area, turn the stock around 180 degree and mute the other piece exactly the same way. And the second piece will be even easier because I don't have this pocket to mill out. I will only need to cut all the holes inside and use the 2D contour tool pipe to cut a pocket here and also cut the outline of the piece. So I don't think that I need to show you the setup on Fusion 360.
I did it, the milling of the second piece were easy, I reduced the current output on the stepper motor driver and everything went smoothly so the 2D control were cut correctly. It only took less than one hour to mill this piece and one hour and a half for the first piece so the milling of these two pieces were pretty easy. Only need to be careful using all the safe parameters because the stock were kind of expensive. Now we'll take the pieces out, clean up the tabs and show you the next step. On each piece, there are a few holes to be threaded with the M6 tab. I will start with the corner bracket for the front of the frame. These two holes will need to be threaded. For this bracket at the back of the frame, these four holes will need to be threaded. For this plate, I will need to thread these two holes. And on this plate, I will need to thread these six small holes around this pocket. Now the threading is done, just make sure that you check the size of the holes. If they are too small, you can bore them out using the corresponding drill bit. For example, these four holes should be 8mm. But they seem a bit small, so I will have to use the drill press to make them bigger using the 8mm drill bit. For those 6mm and 5mm holes, they seem to be good. So I will only need to clean up the 8mm holes. And after that, I think that I will use sandpaper to round the edge so they are not too sharp. I think the time has come. I have all the final pieces right here, ready to be mounted. I don't think that I need to show you all the details about installing those pieces on the machine because the way I will do it is very similar to what I did in my last video. Now let me just replace all the brackets and these two grand tree plates very quickly and then I will try to mill something that can show the performance of the new grand tree plates. Let me just show you quickly the main difference between the installation of those plates and the wooden plates. That those plates have a threaded hose so you don't need to slide the bolt through the plate and tighten the nut on the other side. Here you have the thread so you just tighten the bolt directly on the plate. And that's how I will install the stepper motor on the x-axis and y-axis and also on the end bearing blocks. And I just show you one example of installing this stepper motor on the x-axis. For me, the perfect length of the bolts are 55mm so it can fill up the gap here and also have enough space to bite into the plate. And to fill up the gap between this plate and this plate, I use 5 M8 nuts and one washer. So I just slide the coupler in the shaft of the bolt screw. Align the bolt and just tighten them very quickly. and the length of the bolt here, just enough so it doesn't stick out on this side. Just make sure that you use the same type of nuts as spacer because I have two different types of M8 nuts so I have to chain them to the same type.
I use 6 bolt to fix this type of motor on the X axis. This might be overkill, but for me, I prefer to have more than less. And that's it, I'm done installing the stepper motor on the x-axis. I just do the same to install the rest of the stepper motor and the end bearing block on the machine. Afterward, this machine will be ready to mill again. All the bracket and grand tree plate are installed. So now the frame of this machine is all aluminum. It is very sturdy, I cannot feel any type of movement if I try to push it in any direction. The only thing that is shaking is actually the table that the machine is sitting on. In the future, I might need to change the table to a steel table that is more stable and more sturdy so this machine can sit more comfortable on it. And I think that this is the final shape of my machine. From now on, I don't think that I will need to make any type of modification to the frame. Any type of upgrade or modification will be add-on accessories. Just make the machine more user-friendly. And one another thing, I don't know if you noticed, that my waste board now is inside the machine. It doesn't stick out here anymore. It's kind of centered in the frame because with the bigger working area of this machine, I was able to design the new gantry plate for the x-axis that go a little bit backward so the spindle can move a bit more to the back. But doing that, I kind of bring the center of the gravity of the machine to the back. So when the spindle moves all the way to the back, the machine is very light at the front and it is very easy to tilt the machine to the back. And to prevent this from happening, I use these two bolts to fix the machine to the table so it's not going to tilt. Now to test the performance of this machine, I will try to mill a piece of steel. It is only 1.6mm thick and I will go very slow because I don't know what I'm doing. This will be my first time milling steel, so let's see how it goes.
but I have to stop the cutting in the mirror because as you can see that the piece of steel and also the bit start to get hot and all the chips start to light up and flying around and I think that the bit will break if I go any further so to cut steel I will need some type of mist coolant or fluid to spray to the bit but one thing I can be happy about this experience that the machine cut really smoothly I cannot feel any type of vibration or any type of chattering sound from the bit or spindle I only need proper setup to cut steel other than that I am sure that this machine will be able to do it but now I don't want to finish the video with a cut that is not really successful so let me just try to find a project that is fun to do with this machine I will try to cut a 3D relief out of this piece of aluminum stock 5mm thick first of all I will start with a 3D adaptive clearing tool pass using the 6mm flat end mill For the second tool pass, to make all the details on the piece, I will use a chamfered bit, 30 degree at the tip, and the tip diameter is 0.2 mm. Because this bit is really small, it has two flute, and also the spindle speed is really high, 20,000 RPM. So I think I will have to use some coolant to cool the bit down.
Next step is very easy. I just got to cut this piece out using a 2D contour tool path. After that I will clean it up and show you what level of details that I got on this piece. Here the piece I already cleaned up and how big it is compared to my index finger. I hope that you can appreciate all the level of details that I have on this. I had to zoom in really close to see all the cutting lines. Otherwise the piece looks really smooth and has a lot of small details. Now I already made a mess spraying water to the aluminum piece and the water ran everywhere on the waste board. So I think that this waste board will become just waste very soon. Before changing it I just want to make a bit more mess on it by trying cutting this piece of steel again. This time I just want to spray some water on it to try to cool it down. I don't know if you can see the tip of the bit here, it gets completely smooth, so I don't think that this bit is made for steel cutting, it's only for aluminum. But they are so cheap, so I'm just going to try another round. This time the new bit will have less to cut, because the motor is mostly mute, so hopefully it will be able to cut through. Another bit got broken but I cut almost all the way through but I don't want to leave it hanging like this I just going to cut one more time Finally, I was able to make the most crappy and expensive keychain ever and I will still need to clean it up using my Dremel tool. For now, I don't think that I can mill steel. The reason is that the spindle that I have here is really high speed and I don't think that it is suitable for milling steel. And also, I might need better bit. The tip of that bit that I used in the last cut also gets smooshed. I will figure out how to mill steel in the future but for now, I think that I will be just happy with milling aluminum. To end this long video, I just want to say that I am still very happy with this machine. You can cut aluminum really smoothly and precisely. And I also want to remind you that you can build this machine using your 3018 CNC. It is a long way, there's a lot of middle step, but you will learn a lot about CNC milling during the process. I will share the design on GrabCAD. There will be two folders. One folder is for the 3018 CNC that you can build this machine with smaller gantry plate for the x-axis. Uh, but you can install the ball screw directly on that design. The other folder is for the previous version of this machine that you have all the bracket made out of MDF that you can cut all the components using aluminum and get to the actual machine that I have right here. I hope that in the future I can show you a lot more beautiful things that I can make with this machine.